On this special edition of UTR, we've got a four-pack of cool communities who, quite frankly, have it going on. We hit Sheboygan, Grayling, Allegan, and Adrian for a close encounter with a cool queen, a fishing story that's actually true, some happening headbands, and a historic spot for a spot of tea. Get ready to explore the cool people, places, and things that make these four towns great places to hang around. Along the way is where we find the unexpected. Along the way is where we take in the scenery and often where we have the most fun. Sure, along the way can be the place we stop to fill up or grab a bite to eat. But in Michigan, along the way becomes the place we've been longing for. Because enjoying the journey is always pure Michigan. Your trip begins at Michigan.org. There's something special about the pride, the skill, and the passion it takes to build something great. The Construction Association of Michigan, CAM, understands that passion and has been providing contractors with the resources they need since 1885. A visit to the Stahls Automotive Museum will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. In addition to beautiful cars, enjoy the collection of gas pumps, road signs, oil cans, and other car-related accessories. Info at stallsauto.com. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar, Michigan. You know, the phrase community development doesn't sound like a heck of a lot of fun, but on UTR, we have a ton of fun showing you developing communities that are turning Michigan into one of the greatest places in the world to live, work, play, and stay. And on this show, we got a four for for you. It's kind of like a twofer, only twice as good. That's right, on this special UTR, we're gonna show you four fantastic towns that are turning up their talent, creating new spaces, and opening new places so you totally wanna to live here. And speaking of here, here we go, because first off the shelf is Sheboygan. Sheboygan is located near the tip of Michigan's magnificent mitten, just 15 miles southeast of Mackinac City on M23. Now take a town with a really cool name, add some rich history, tune up the downtown, then plop it down right in one of the prettiest parts of Michigan. And what do you got? <laughs> Sheboygan. Right on the mouth of the Sheboygan River, right on Lake Huron, and right down the road from the mighty Mackinac Bridge, Sheboygan is perfectly placed for an awesome quality of life. It was once a mighty logging town, but now it's a boater's paradise with tons of places where you can displace the water with whatever craft you crave. The downtown has also been beautified, shopified, and foodified for maximum pleasure, fun, and relaxation. And speaking of food, if you're looking for a righteously royal place to relax and quaff some potent potables, might I suggest an audience with the queen? And by that, I mean the Queen's Head Wine Pub where their motto is simply, let them drink wine. And by them, they mean you. This relatively new hot spot with a cool vibe was the brainchild of John and Marcella Costin, a couple who love where they live, love food and drink, and want to share it with the world. I have to ask you guys, why Queen's head? Why not the whole queen? Why just her head? <laughs> I don't understand that part of it. Well, you. You have a Brit next to you over here, right? So yeah, you whenever know, you go to England... I heard you speak. You're not from Sheboygan originally, I can I'm, tell you that. Yeah, I'm from, London. I'm from London, England. And why the Queen said we bought a painting uh, about 18 years ago, and uh, we decided when we wanted to open a pub, that we'd call it the Queen's Head and yeah. would use our picture as the emblem. Well, what inspired you to open a wine pub in Sheboygan? Basically, what happened is I knew we were going to open a Simply Marcella, and my whole concept of women enjoying themselves, having the opportunity to have a glass of wine while shopping, and then the space became available, and I just dreamed that we could make it all happen right here in this building. So Simply Marcella is your boutique that came first. Yes. 
and then you loved it so much you thought you'd just invite some friends back here. And th the atmosphere in here, I have to tell you, I don't know who's responsible for it, but it feels like I'm in England. It is a bit like an English pub, you're right. Uh, totally. Yes. Yes. But why not, it's usually beer, why the wine? Is that your influence? It's a combination, that's why we called it a wine pub, but we're really highlighting the wine concept because I love wine, so I'm a little bit selfish. As do I. I oh, to, cheers. I, I have to tell you, <laughs> thank you very much. A very big cheers. There's so much happening in Sheboygan right now, and you guys are a big part of that, aren't you? There's no doubt about it. Sheboygan has momentum right now. It's a big team effort. Now, you guys are also developing a theater right yes. next door on the same block. Well, that's a, quite some big developments. That door over there, actually, well, actually, it's a bookcase, but it rotates. It's a bit like Harry Potter. And when you go through there, you go through to the Lark Lounge, and then after the Lark Lounge, you go into the Lark Theater, a little 50-seater live music theater, which uh, we're looking forward to opening around September, October of this year. Now, getting back to what you guys do, you don't just have potent potables here, you also serve food as well. We have great food. Sure we do. Right. Yeah. So what's your philosophy here on food? Actually, it's funny, we were talking about that this morning, about how would you name our food? And Marcella came up with a, what was it? I gourmet, said gourmet, gourmet comfort, food. comfort food. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? It's actually what we like. Yes. And we found that other people like what we like. We use a lot of our local sources, which has been great, like Big Stone Bay Fishery. They are close to Max City. We use their smoked trout, their smoked whitefish dip, their smoked whitefish sausage. And then there's a store two doors down from us, Bittersweet. A great she store. makes all of our homemade crackers, biscuits. There's like five different types of crackers that we have to serve with all of our gourmet cheeses. So there's this local togetherness that we're trying to put together here and it seems to work for everybody and it tastes good. Another simple question, if you guys had to pour Sheboygan into a glass, what would it taste like? Simple answer for me. Go ahead. Can we say it at the same time? Yeah. yeah. What did you practice? <laughs> a cold glass of water on a hot day. When people talk about investing in a town or believing in something, we truly do believe in Sheboygan. I really feel that we are growing and we're growing at a good pace. And like I said, when you start talking to the people in the community, you'll fall in love with it a little bit more. This is our third time here. We love Sheboygan. Yeah, good. We, so don't do we. Need a, we don't need a reason to come here. So do we. Well, oh, here's one right here. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers again. <laughs> but I am drinking it. <laughs> yeah, me too. OK, maybe I'll have some now. <laughs> it's time. I'm telling you, we had a royal blast. We made tons of new friends, ate and drank like kings and queens, and a jolly good time was had by all. The Queen's Head Wine Pub really is a wonderful place to eat, drink, and be merry with mates new and old. And it's just one of many great reasons why you need to show up in Sheboygan. Like you need an excuse for great wine and food, right? Now, if you seek Michigan's great outdoors, ah, but you want a really cool city to hang out in while you're doing it, Grayling is your go-to town. Grayling is conveniently located in northern lower Michigan, right off I-75, and right on your way to, well, everywhere. Grayling's a small town that's developed into one of the greatest places around for the outdoor lover to settle down. And the downtown is cool, quaint, and extremely comfortable. And if you love to fish, the Asabal and Manistee Rivers are right in your backyard. And speaking of fishing, you can't talk trout in these parts without first stopping by the old Asabal Fly Shop. They're a mess of passionate fly fishing folks who live in Grayling, and you guessed it, live to fish. Heck, their cool log cabin confines are even located right on the river. Bonus. Now, to get more acquainted with this cool town, and to find out how much I still don't know about fly fishing, I grabbed a rod and reeled in Jeff Gardner. I'm telling you, Jeff, you are in the perfect location. You're right on the main road, right on the Asabal River, and there's a beautiful waterfall right there for you guys to look at. Yeah, it's a pretty nice spot. Oh my gosh, did you plan it this way? Yeah, just... yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, I take it since the word old is in the name of the shop, this has been here for a while. Yeah, there's been a fly fishing uh, business on this site since 34, I think, 34, 35. And uh, it's only had a few owners over the, what, 90 odd years. Mm -hmm. We've owned the shop for about uh, 12 years now. Beautiful place. Thank you. I mean, I was going to make a joke. I'd like to stay here. It's so nice. But I guess you upstairs, you actually have a place you rent out? We do. We have a great lodge upstairs, sleep six, basically a big apartment, and all the accoutrements. And it's really lovely. And you even put a barbecue place out back. That's we did. That's outstanding. We, we have about 100 seats, and we have a nice patio outside, and uh, craft beer, and barbecue, and blues music. 
I didn't realize until just a few days ago that grayling, the town's named after a fish. It is. The Michigan grayling, which is extinct. But um, You guys are too good at your job. That's right. <laughs> but a lot of people don't know Trout Unlimited, which is one of the biggest conservation groups in the world, was founded here in Grayling. Wow. Now, you've worked a lot with the state to do a lot of great things for this community. What are some of the things that are happening here? In the last six or seven years, Grayling has really kind of had a renaissance. Yeah. Lots of hardworking people, a lot of money invested. The state came in and did a lot of grant work. And we've had several restaurants and breweries and our new restaurant, and we remodeled our shop. Well, you guys have done a great job of giving the downtown a sense of place. What do you personally love about living in Grayling? Well, the whole Michigan thing is living up north is a real special place. You have to, you have to understand what it's all about, though, and you have to learn it. You know, you, the distance to shopping might be a little longer, and but you got to find the bar you like, and you know, the clothing store you like, and it doesn't have some of the, the handinesses of the city, but it also doesn't have a lot of the, the, the busyness. I think if I ever get good at fly fishing, I can come here and stay at the lodge? Absolutely, even if you're bad at fly fishing. Oh, okay, I'm just, the... <laughs> now I don't have any excuse to get good. <laughs> fly fishing really is one of those sports that once you get into it, it becomes part of who you are. And Andy Partlow should know, he helps people find the flies that find the fish frequently. Andy, what is it about fly fishing that once you get bit by that fly, it becomes such a passion for people? I think what it is uh, with fly fishing yeah. is that we're kind of trying to beat these trout at their own game. Right. We're not trying to have them slide up and eat something they wouldn't normally eat, like a worm or something like that. Right. So like, they're out there eating these bugs, and they're particularly eating these bugs, and we're just we're trying to imitate that exact insect. So I think it's like calling in a turkey or something. You know, like anyone, <laughs> anyone can get one off the side of the road, but calling one in is beating them at their own game. It's such a specialized thing, but once you get it, sure. It's, I, because I see by my house, there's guys fly fishing at the park. Sure. It's such a beautiful motion when you see what, how, when you can really do it, as opposed to me catching squirrel, deer, tree, you know, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I think that's um, part of what appeals to folks is sort of the aesthetic nature of fly fishing. For me personally, I just think sometimes it's the right tool, right job. <laughs> you guys have classes here on how to, how to make flies and? Oh yeah, everybody needs to learn, so we have, fly tying classes, instructional to get people learning how to cast, those sort of things. And of course, guided trips and advanced classes, and, and we'll take you as far as you want to go. Literally everything you need to discover and explore this great sport is right here under one roof. And remember, they've even got the river right out back. So if it's a pleasant peninsula you seek, heck, you're already in one. But if fly fishing floats your boat, stop by the old Osabo fly shop, gear up, and then grab a place in Grayling. It's the kind of community people love to come to again and again and again. And if you already lived here, you wouldn't have to go anywhere. Think about it. You know, there's this one town that's been on our short list forever. Well, our list finally got so short, we're here. <laughs> Where's here? Thought you'd never ask. Hold on to your I might want to make this my home hat because Allegan, Michigan is one cool community. Its awesome downtown is cradled by the Kalamazoo River and it's got lots of welcoming green and aquatic spaces to enjoy. Heck, the historic one lane bridge that brings you into town is so cool, you might want to leave just so you can come back in again. Allegan has what we on UTR like to call great bones and the city leaders are building an awesome body of work to match. It'd be a great place to raise a family, retire, and right now start a business. Or you could just hang out here for the day. But where is this little up and coming town? I thought you'd never ask. Allegan is located southwest of Grand Rapids, northwest of Kalamazoo, and about 20 miles due east of Lake Michigan. Well, you're probably wondering how I know so much about Allegan if I've never been here before. <laughs> Simple. I met somebody who has. Actually, I asked a real resident. Meet Landria Christman, a young hometown entrepreneur who had an idea, wrapped a headband around it, and is making a big splash around the world. Her company is called The Sassy Olive, and even though it has nothing to do with cooking or cocktails, it's making a lot of heads very happy. Well, <laughs> that's my, hey, that's my job. <laughs> Okay, first things first, what is that thing on your head? What does it do, and how did this all start? 
Well, this is called a sassy wrap. It's not a bandana, it's not a scarf, it's a headband, and I think people think of a headband as just like a sweatband, like a Richard Simmons type thing. Right. But headbands come in lots of shapes and styles, and I decided uh, I was between undergrad and grad, and I was waiting tables and doing an unpaid internship at a hospital and had nothing to pull my hair back that actually worked and was my style. So well, I- Well, an invention of necessity. Yes. Yeah. So I went to my grandma's and I said, hey, will you show me how to use your sewing machine? And so she taught me on her 40-year-old Viking sewing machine. The and Vikings use it? Is that old? Yeah, it's that old. <laughs> yeah, but it comes with like a helmet. But so I learned on that and I had never sewn before. And then I wore it to work and some girls started asking about it. And then from there, I basically started on my parents' ping pong table in the basement and it just kind of exploded. Well, most great businesses start in garages or basements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ping pong tables, yep. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's amazing. So you ship these things all over the world? Yeah, yep. So we started on Etsy, but then we moved to our own website. And now we actually just this week got an order from Germany and we ship all over the United States, obviously a lot in Michigan because that's where we've done the bulk of our shows, but we'll be heading to Chicago soon and we're hoping to start getting more out of Michigan as well. Well, the neat thing is you're a, very, you're a young person mm -hmm. compared to me. Well, compared to me, most people are young people, <laughs> but anyway, you started this business. Now you've turned it into this cottage industry. It's not even a cottage, you're in, you've got brick and mortar. You've mm -hmm. got a staff of people yep. sewing for, including your grandma. Mm -hmm. You pay her, right? Sometimes. Okay, anyway, so. She doesn't always take it. She just <laughs> but, looks close. So you're employing people. It's good for the city. It's good for the economy. You're changing lives. You're saving people from getting hair in their eyes. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Yeah. People, well, I started my business in Allegan, and this was where, like, the loyal following began. So when people told me I was crazy for putting my store down here after I graduated and just decided to go for it, I was like, no, I think it'll, I think it'll be all right because these are the people and this is the community that helped me get to this point. What do you love about this town? What I love about Allegan is there's so much charm and hidden like treasures here in Allegan. There's so much going on now and I was one of the first people to come in kind of on the forefront of this revival that was starting to happen and I was like, this is gonna be good, I wanna be a part of this. I was gonna say, a lot of young people, they graduate school and they think they live in a smaller town, I'm out of here. I'm, you know, bigger and bigger and better, greater things, and they leave. Mm -hmm. But you decided to stay. Yeah. And you took something as simple as a headband and you've turned it into an industry. Mm -hmm. And now you're creating your own destiny, your own future, you're employing people, you're yeah. helping change the downtown of mm -hmm. Allegan. I mean, I think, I think I said it earlier, but well done. Thanks. Well, now that I know what these functional and fashionable head huggers are for, it was time for me to try some on. Ooh, here's a nice one, huh? How about no? Huh? Probably not. Tom, you should probably stick to baseball hats. Well, there may not have been one for me, but I'll bet the Sassy Olive has about 11 dozen you'd love to adorn your brain holder with. You know, they say that young people are the future. Well, when you meet people like Landria, you totally know that's true. And when it comes to Allegan's future, thanks to youngins like her and all the development that's going on around here, it's pretty much white light bright. Now, what Michigan City has two colleges and tons of art, history, and culture? <laughs> well, you're gonna find out. Actually, uh, it's Adrian. <laughs> you heard and are about to see right. This terrific town is home to Adrian College and Siena Heights University. So there's plenty of young energy and intellect to go around. Adrian also has a beautifully restored downtown that's rich in history, awesome architecture, great shops, and of course, a UTR favorite, places to break bread. Yep, this is a town you really need to visit. So we'd uh, better tell you where it is. Adrian is located about an hour southwest of Ann Arbor in southeast lower Michigan. So there you go, now you know. Yeah, there's so much to see and do here in town that I might have to partake in a caffeinated beverage to keep up. <laughs> uh, anybody up for a spot of tea? That's right, it's time for me to get cultured. And there's no better place in Adrian than the Governor Croswell Tea Room, right downtown next to the Opera House. Now this is high tea with all the trimmings, and the decor is downright delicate, 
dignified and decked out with dainty doilies. Al and Phyllis Wilkerson are the tea room's proud proprietors, and they're about to school me in the subtle art of teetotaling. Al, I went out and bought this vest for you, because I know it's coming here. Where's your tie? I forgot the tie, no tie. sorry. No tie sorry. in the tea room, so. How did a guy, now you're an ex high school principal and, coach, basketball, and basketball coach. coach. Yes. How did you end up owning a tea room? It was my wife's idea. Uh -huh. We retired, I was a high school principal, yeah. and she's a teacher. She retired a year before I did, and she used to take our girls to this tea room in Plymouth, Michigan, yeah. and every week. So she said, I'd like to buy this tea room. So I said, honey, we're, we're gonna be re we're retiring. We don't need another business. <laughs> and so we bought it, and then we had lots of people from Adrian, which is my hometown, come up to Plymouth, and then they said, well, why don't you build one in Adrian? So here we are. How did it become the Governor Croswell Tea Room? Well, we wanted to build a tea room here, and we were looking for a name, and Phyllis and I were talking, yeah. and we had the Croswell Theater next door, and not many people know why it was named the Croswell. It was named after our governor, Charles Croswell, who was the 17th governor of the state of Michigan. Yeah. It was from Adrian, and so we named it the Governor Croswell Tea Room. Well, the downtown, this is my first time to Adrian, and the downtown is absolutely beautiful. Is there a lot happening here? Yep, yeah, lots happening. It's fun for me to hear people say how much has changed the last few years. And it's a work in progress. You know, this used to be a very vibrant downtown with business uh, lawyers, doctors upstairs, and all these buildings. And then um, they built the mall. Everyone moved out, out to the mall. The businesses did. <clears throat> we all did that for a yeah, while. This, yeah. was, this was a deserted city down here. And then they finally said, hey, you know, we have to do something. And a lot of cities are going through the same thing. It's coming full circle. I yeah. mean, especially young people want to reconnect with cities yeah. and downtowns. We have about 700 people living in apartments downtown now. And it's really kind of exciting to watch the, the change of it going back to the old days well, like it was. Well, what kind of people come to the tea room? Because I noticed there's kind of, it seems like there's people of all walks here. We have a lot of men with hats come in here. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have all kinds of people. Right now, about 70% of our business is from outside of Illinois County, so we are a true destination. Well, thanks for having a spot of tea with me, Al. I appreciate it. As a matter of fact, look, I've got a spot here, and a spot here, and a spot here. Yeah, it's hard. you can't train me. They can't, that's not good. <laughs> well, with my head full of Adrian info, it was time for me to finally experience high tea with all the trimmings. So Phyllis filled me in. So this is high tea. Yes. I hope you don't mind, I brought my own doily from home. I'm relieved, yes. There you go. Okay, so is it, I've always wanted to know, is it pinky out? Well, only if you want to be pretentious. Oh, okay. And sometimes we want to be pretentious. <laughs> so how does this work? It comes obviously in layers or in waves? In, in waves, in courses. Many times, most of the time, high tea will come all in one stack where you have your savories, sandwiches, scones and sweets. We do ours in courses. Ah. So here we have a first course on our tray that has our sandwiches mm -hmm. and our savories, which we choose quiche. Ah. Our second course is scones, served with homemade lemon curd, which I think has a very unfortunate name, but it's like a lemon pudding, mm. I love it. Strawberry preserves, which are very typically English, and Devonshire cream, which comes from Devonshire cows in Devonshire, England, and it's a very rich butter, but it's also very traditionally English. Well, so. here's to high tea. With well, the thank governor, you. Crosswell's tea room, <laughs> I say. Nice <laughs> sharing it with you, you today. You simply must go by. I'm a telling you, enjoying a cup of tea in the afternoon really is a fun and relaxing experience, even for a slovenly commoner like me and the sweet and savory selections offered up are the perfect sides with which to sip. So for an awesome afternoon pick-me-up, have a jolly good cup of tea at the Governor Croswell Tea Room. And for a town that'll pick up your mind, body, and spirit, spend a day in Adrian, or two, or five, or 10. Along the way is where we find the unexpected. Along the way is where we take in the scenery, and often where we have the most fun. Sure, along the way can be the place we stop to fill up or grab a bite to eat. But in Michigan, along the way becomes the place we've been longing for. Because enjoying the journey is always pure Michigan. 
Your trip begins at Michigan.org. There's something special about the pride, the skill, and the passion it takes to build something great. The Construction Association of Michigan, CAM, understands that passion and has been providing contractors with the resources they need since 1885. A visit to the Stahls Automotive Museum will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. In addition to beautiful cars, enjoy the collection of gas pumps, road signs, oil cans, and other car-related accessories. Info at StahlsAuto.com. 